you see it? It's beginning. It started small, almost invisible, imperceptible, but present. Perceived not by human eyes, but by faith. The new begins in the spaces unseen, but known, felt. You sense it, feel it. It grows and multiplies. The new is forming. I am forming and shaping it. It's quickening. The feeling increase from faint potentials to undeniable certainties. Like a ground swell of assurance, the new is perceived and known. Can you feel it? I have placed eternity in the hearts of man. In their hearts I have made my home. I have established my kingdom. It is in their hearts I form the new. No one puts new wine into an old wineskin. The new wine is placed in fresh wineskins into fresh hearts. And now the time has come for the new to break out. For what was hidden to be revealed. Awake, O sleeper, and see. Awake and arise, for the time is here. The new has come. Stand, breathe, run, live. Seek me and you will find me, and I will bring forth the new. It will spring up within you. Can you not perceive it? Ready yourself, for I have called you, formed you, fashioned you, positioned you, purposed you. Now I am sending you. Awaken a generation. Call forth the warriors, the strong men. Call back the sons and daughters. Ready yourself, for the city is sleeping. The valley is quiet, but hope is stirring. Hope is rising. Hope is building. Hope has a sound. So call to the masses, the sleeping and the stagnant. Call to the hurting, the lost and the broken. Call to the hopeless. Tell them. Powerful. People are uh, need to wake up. Come on. <laughs> Who's ready for vision this morning? Yeah. If you've got a Bible, why don't you open to Mark chapter 2? We did, we had a lot of fun last night at uh, the gala. And uh, you know, if you were there and you've heard this, uh, I'm praying that God just stirs it afresh in you this morning. Um, if you weren't here, I, uh, um, my prayer for you right now is that the Holy Spirit draws you into what he is doing uh, in this house. Mark chapter 2, verse 22, says this. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skins would both be lost. New wine calls for new wineskins. Can we pray? Mighty God, Lord, I thank you so much that you're here with us. I thank you that this is your church. I thank you that you are guiding and leading. And God, I pray right now that you be moving in this place, speaking to people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, new wine, new wineskins. Prophetically, that scripture has been spoken over our church over the last few years. That there is, that there is a new wine that God is bringing into our church. That there, is, there is something that he is doing that is new, that he hasn't necessarily done before, but, but that he is preparing to do something. And, and, and scripture tells us that if we are to prepare for the new wine, we need to establish the new wine skin. You don't produce wine if you have nothing to put it in. That would, be, that, would be, that would defeat the purpose of producing the wine. The wine would spoil. So, so it says here that we get, we get the wine skin prepared for the new wine. And so this morning, as we, as we release, I say we, I'm anticipating that Rachel's with me in spirit up here, but 
As, as we release the vision that God's put on our heart, very much we feel as if we are articulating a wine skin that God is, is reforming in victory, preparing it for the new wine that he has. And you know, it would, be, it would be strange of me in this whole journey not to reference Joshua and the journey that he went on as a, as a succeeding leader of the nation of Israel. Uh, and in Joshua chapter 5, we have an interaction where, where God says to Joshua, now that you have crossed over the river, there's one thing you need to do before you start taking and fighting and going and, and taking the promises that I have for you and this nation. There's one thing that you need to do. And God says to Joshua, I need you to redefine and reaffirm the the mark, the identity of my people on the nation of Israel. And so Joshua does some things that we're not going to do as a church, uh, which half of our population are going to be very happy about. But what he does is he redefines them. He redefines the nation of Israel as God's people. He reestablishes their identity. And the reality of the, the, the nation of Israel is that Joshua's generation was a second generation. You know, they, they, they had been born in the wilderness. They'd come into the promised land. And they needed to know who they were as God's people. What did it mean to be God's people? Because, because the way in which they operated as God's people was about to shift. They had operated uh, one way when they were in the wilderness But God was preparing for them to operate a different way. God was preparing for them to go on the offensive. God was preparing for them to start taking land, not just just being being provided for in the meantime. God was getting them ready to, to go on the front foot and begin to take ground for his kingdom and establish his, his kingdom and, and, and a place in all the earth that, that the glory and the reality of God would be seen from. But before they did that, they needed to know who they were. They needed to know what it was to be an Israelite, one of God's people. And so Joshua's generation had new leadership, new people, a new expression, but ultimately they had the same DNA. They were still Israelites. Even though they had been born in the wilderness, they were still, they still carried the DNA of being an Israelite. And you know, so too, victory. We have stepped into a second generation and we might have new leadership and we might have a new expression and, 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 you know, we might have some new people. In fact, we are loads of new people. It's awesome. People are joining our community and finding their place in this house every single week at the moment and I just love that. And if you're visiting with us today, let me, let me tell you, you are so welcome here. We hope you find your place here, that you feel like you can fit in our community, that this is a place where you you are known and you can know God and know that he knows you. And you know, victory has a DNA. Just like the nation of Israel had a DNA and that new generation carried it, so too victory has a DNA that this new generation carries. We We need to understand that the the description of generation was not because of age. For Joshua, it was, it was a defining of who was there when they crossed the river. That is what became the defining kind of descriptor of that Joshua generation. It was who made it across the river. And I just, I just want to say that for victory, that's the same. When we talk about a generation, we're not talking about age. We're talking about defining who is here now that we've crossed the river. Who, who is amongst our community? Who is standing on the other side of the river saying, we're ready, we're a part of this, we want to be in this generation of victory and we want to go and we want to, we want to see the promises that God has spoken over this house come to pass. Don't think that because you're a certain age, young, old, that somehow you are disqualified from being defined in this generation. No, the very fact that you are here in this community defines you as a part of that generation. But just as Joshua's generation had a certain DNA, but they had a new expression, so so too we need to understand that we will never lose who we were in becoming what God has called us to be. But we should always anticipate that we will have a new expression of the DNA that is within us. 
We will always be a life-giving church empowered by the Spirit to influence this city and beyond for the kingdom of God. That's who we are. That is our DNA. That is embedded deep within us. But can I tell you, we're shifting into a season where that is going to look different. The way in which we do that is going to look different. The way in which we describe ourselves, the way in which people view victory is going to look different because we are a new generation. And just like a little baby where Simone and Damien, they're looking at their little baby and that, that baby is a combination of their DNA. Their DNA is in that child and is undeniable and yet that child will grow to be its own person. We have got to expect that we are stepping into a season as a church where we have an amazing DNA, but we are becoming our own person in, for, for, for this generation. And so we are never going to replace our DNA. But we do need to know how to describe what it is to be a new generation. We need to be able to put some language that distinguishes this new generation of victory. We need to be able to articulate what it is and what it looks like to be called to this community in this season of the life of victory. And so today, as we step into our new wineskin, we're going to be releasing some new language, some new ways that we describe the very heartbeat of victory. You know, our values of the past will now be described in three statements. They will articulate this, this inner beating heart, this, this DNA that has always been but is now taking on a new expression. Pastor Keith and Janet, our amazing emeritus pastors, I want to honour this morning here with us. Can we, can we give them a round of applause? They established what it means to be someone of C3 Victory. They embedded values into this house. And we will not lose those values becoming who God has called us to be. But we are going to be articulating them in a new way. So I'd like to release to you this morning the new way that we describe our heartbeat in this house. And it's simple and it's clear. It's this. Our reason is Jesus. Our mission is people. And our goal is hope. That is the heartbeat of this house. Our reason is Jesus. It's his kingdom. It's his word. It's his spirit and his presence and his power. Our mission is people because the church is people. Out there are people. We are about salvation, transformation, connection, and discipleship. And in addition, I guess, to new language that articulates what makes or what what is in our heart, what our heartbeat is, so too we are clarifying what makes us distinct. You know, Joshua was instructed to make the Israelites distinct. We are going to use language, not a flint knife. Thank you, Jesus. But our language will be equally as clear. Because if we try to be a church that is for every single person, we end up, not being a church that God has called us to be. God loves having uh, eyes and ears and nose and mouth as the body of Christ. We're called to be different, to reach different, so that everybody might have an opportunity to find their fit in a community of believers. There There is incredible value in knowing who we are as a church. What does it mean to be victory? What makes us distinct in this city and beyond? And so this is what it means. This is who we are. If someone asks you, what, what, what's different about victory? You're going to be able to say, you know what, I, I know exactly who we are. We describe ourselves in five ways. First one, we are full of life. We are fun, we are energetic, youthful, we're vibrant, we're fresh. We are authentic. Where authenticity and realness will always trump performance and presentation. We are faith filled and bold. We're forward thinking, apostolic. We are willing to believe for the impossible and step towards it. 
We are aiming for excellence because God deserves that we aim to bring our best. And we aim to represent his kingdom to the best of our ability in our giftings, our passion, and the expression of those. And we are honoring. We honor all around. This is a place where God is honored, where people are honored, where volunteers and leaders alike are honored, where honor is shown in our hospitality and in our generosity. That's what it means to be victory. That is who we are. That is how we express our part of the body of Christ. We are a church that is real, that makes Jesus real and relevant in people's worlds, where a real Jesus can meet with people's real issues. You know, with a new expression of our values and a new expression of our distinctives, you'll also begin to see that we are rolling out a new tangible wineskin, a new way that we brand victory, new colors, fonts. A new, a, a, it's an expression, it's an external expression of people indicating that God is doing a new thing within our church, that there is new wine behind that. You know, sometimes it cannot seem like much to, to rebrand, to put new colors and new language on things, but it is an external representation of what God is stirring in this place. And so... We are and always will be centrally and primarily a church. But you know, we're not just a church. We're also an ush. We're also a victory center. We're a church that reaches out to build in. Where the church is the trunk, the source of life, where strength and sustenance are found and flow from. But you know what? We branch out into the community. We branch out there to bring the influence of the kingdom of God so that others would find Jesus and, be, and have themselves found in him. And so it's no surprise to me that the image that comes to mind when we think of the church in the middle and then Ush and the Victory Center coming out of us on each side, we form the prophetic image that has always been declared over victory, that that we are a spearhead in this city. And you know, I believe, I firmly believe that it is not just one alone, but all three that enable us to be truly the spearhead of the kingdom of God in this city and beyond. And all of this new requires a statement that clarifies what it means to be C3 Victory in this new generation. A statement that when connected to our name correlates to this new wineskin, our heartbeat and our distinctives. A statement that encompasses the heartbeat of Ush, which is to be a home away from home, and the heartbeat of the Victory Centre, which we have rebranded as a hope for everyone. It's a statement that defines the whole of us as victory in every way and every aspect. It is a statement that defines C3 victory for this generation. And so this morning, I want to release to you that statement and let you know that we are C3 victory, a home for hope. You see, hope isn't a concept or an emotion. Hope is a person. And so to be a home for hope is indicative that as a, as a congregation, we are a place where Jesus is welcome. That people know they can find Jesus amongst us. But also that he is, that we individually are a temple of the Holy Spirit, that he is making his home in us. So whether we are gathered or scattered, irrespective of that, people have the opportunity to meet Jesus in us and through us as we are out in the community or if they come into this place. And a home speaks of family, safety, security, being welcome. It speaks of hospitality, care, growth and love. It speaks of being found, of being known, of being accepted. All of these things which are the family of God. We're a home for hope where real people have a real encounter with a real God. We are individually home for hope, collectively a home for hope, corporately a home for hope, 
And we will be, locationally, a home for hope. In addition to this, we're launching a new website, which gives an expression that we are all three. That when you go to c3victory.org.au, and you can go there now, it's live, but you will find expressed there all three. Our church, Ush, and the centre having the capacity to go from what we are as one into whatever space someone is trying to access. We've also launched an app, which is really exciting. It's live too. If you wish to download it, go for it. I made a joke last night. I said that means you can take victory wherever you go. Uh, But (laughs) thanks, Pastor Darren. (laughs) Laughing at my jokes. Thanks, man. (laughs) But in addition to articulating the identity of victory, which I think is critical before we step into the things that God has for us in the future, moving, taking ground, establishing those sorts of things. We are planning to make some strategic investments over the next 12 months across all three areas. We're launching a coffee trailer for our Sunday morning, which is going to be very exciting. The reason it's not just a coffee cart is because we believe that we have the capacity to do more than just provide caffeine on a Sunday morning. That we want to be able to park it at our Victory Centre and offer an initiative to those living in distress where where in a way that maintains their dignity, they can access free coffee and maybe a muffin and something like that. And we want to be able to take it out into the city, park it out the front of our Ush schools on, on, on a couple of mornings a week where parents are interacting, getting coffee, but knowing that C3 Victory exists in this city. We want to be able to park it where people are and make it undeniable that there is hope available in this city. In addition to that, you know, we're looking at adding some really fun elements for for kids on a Sunday morning, pre-service and post-service, so that as a family, you can actually come early, kids can have fun, you can connect, have coffee, and you don't have to try to do that and worship Jesus at the same time. You can connect, get caffeinated, come in, and then enjoy the presence of the Lord. Just going to show up a bit earlier, that's all, guys. So we believe that these, as well as other investments, are going to continue to build our congregation and ultimately enable it to go from strength to strength. You know, we have continued to see our our, our in-person attendance rise and rise, and we are believing that that is going to continue upwards over 300 week in and week out in this place, praising Jesus. And, you know, we can't, we can't make that happen in any strategic way. We make that because you love the house. That happens because, because you value being in community worshiping Jesus. And you prioritize being together. I want to encourage you to do that so that we can gather as a whole community. We can, we can, we can be next to each other whether you're going through good times or, or, or difficult times. We can support. We can celebrate. In our city and beyond, we're going to continue investing internationally in our assistance of C3 Bangkok. Locally, we're going to continue to support prayer events in the city and also SRE. There's a number of other things that we're doing in those spaces that you can find out about on our website. In our Victory Centre, we are going to continue to expand the work of the C3 yard maintenance, which is going from strength to strength and having an incredible impact in people's lives. We're looking to develop and increase our staffing structure so that we can manage an increase in initiatives, so that we can manage an increase in, in, in the capacity to go out into the community and bring hope to people no matter where they're at. And also we are looking at building some strategic bridges between the community and the Victory Centre and the church so that we can walk people from their first interaction with hope right into a place where they might find and grow in their relationship with Jesus. In Victory Ush. We are continuing to clarify the identity of Victory Ush and its space within C3 Victory. That's going to that's gonna take on the look of a rebrand for Ush, which is really exciting. We're also restructuring our staff to be able to go from the five centres that we have. We want to believe that we're going to be able to manage between six and ten centres. And to have that increase over the next little while, well, I'd like to believe that, that six will come next year. But we need to restructure our staff. We need to grow. Right, I believe Beck's just having a little like panic attack, but you know, Pete's having a panic attack. <laughs> Jesus, do what you can. <laughs> but to do that, we need to we need to grow the structure. We need to enlarge the net to to handle uh, a growth in in young people, in families that are connected in that space. 
So across our three areas, we're stepping into some really exciting things. But most of all, we are establishing who we are moving forward. Now, earlier I said that the Joshua generation wasn't defined by age. It was defined by who was present. But the truth is, people were present because they'd made a decision. People were present because they had chosen faith over fear. Those that had chosen faith were there. You know how I know that? It's because Joshua and Caleb, the two spies, the only ones that had faith, they were there in that generation. Every single person that stepped across that dry river with the faith that the water wasn't suddenly going to come rushing in. The priests that first stepped into the water carrying the ark, believing that God would do what he said he was going to do. Every member of that nation of Israel was there because they had faith. And we're going to arrive right now at an opportunity to pledge finance towards the vision of victory. And you know, the scripture says that, that where our treasure is, our heart will be. And I said at our gala last night that for some people this morning is about reinvesting your heart into victory. On your seat, you're going to find a pledge card. You're also going to find a dream card. And that dream card is something new for us as a part of vision. For those that were at the gala, you know all about this. You had an opportunity to write something on that dream card last night. You see, I don't believe in any way, shape or form that you can buy a miracle from God. We don't see that in Scripture anywhere. But I do believe that faith is not compartmentalised. I don't believe that if we have faith for one thing, it remains only in that context. I believe that a life defined by faith is a life that has faith in all areas. And as you sit here and allow the Holy Spirit to stir you to step out in faith for our church, I want you to bring your personal life into that space. I want you to allow what the Holy Spirit is stirring in you in the area of faith to transcend just the context of church. And I want to ask you, what is it that you're dreaming for in your life? What is it that you're believing for, for breakthrough in your life? And what is God stirring in you right now that that same faith can prompt you to write something down that you're believing that you're going to see God do in the next 12 months? And that's going to be something that you hold on to. Take that dream card home, put it on your fridge. And I'm believing in 12 months, we are going to have a whole lot of testimonies of the faithfulness of God in our lives as a community. That the same God that brings breakthrough for our church is the same God who's able to bring breakthrough in your personal life. We don't just believe for the impossible for our house. We believe for the impossible for those that are our house. And that's every one of you. So as you take a moment now to pray, talk to your spouse. If you weren't there and weren't able to pledge last night, we're going to come to a moment right now where you can pledge finance the vision. You know, we're believing for $250,000 to make this vision happen over the next 12 months to rebrand, to realign everything, to extend our staffing, to enlarge the net, to carry more in the Victory Centre and in Ush, for launching our coffee trailer and for doing a whole lot of other things in our church to move us forward into who God has called us to be. We are also going to be placing uh, an amount of that finance into our capacity to have a home tangibly, a place where we can gather, a place that is ours. Yes, we have the Victory Centre, but we're believing that God has more for us.